Hey everyone, uh, I want to start by apologizing for not being able to make the live lecture tonight. I mentioned last week that I have a baseball game to work tonight, the Rays versus the Yankees. Um, so it probably comes as no surprise that I decided to do my research paper on that subject. So, how are MLB teams using Twitter to engage fans? So I wanted to start by defining social media. And basically, this is one of the definitions that is probably the most widely recognized as being the best. Um, and it's a group of internet-based applications that build on the ideological and technological foundations of Web 2.0, and that allow for the creation and exchange of user-generated content. So I also wanted to explain a little bit about what Web 2.0 is. And those are online applications that promote information sharing and collaboration, and they focus on the user. Uh, most research that I saw just kind of assumed that everyone knew what Web 2.0 was, and I wanted to go a little further in that. So I also explained what Twitter is in my paper, which I think we're all well aware of, but I wanted to go over some of the more recent growth trends, and I thought it was important for my research to address worldwide growth and growth within the United States, basically because Major League Baseball does have a worldwide audience, but I think it's safe to say that most of the fan bases are within the United States. So, um, Globally, Twitter was the fastest growing social platform in 2012. They saw a 40% increase from quarter two to quarter four, and this led them to 288 million active users and over 500 million total users. So this accounts for 21% of all of the internet population being on Twitter. So in the United States, there was still a ton of growth, even though most experts thought that it was going to slow down, similar to what Facebook did, but they actually did have a 94% increase from quarter two to quarter four. This led to 33.8 million active users and 59 million total users. So um, a few of the things that contribute to this growth are mobile devices. So there's a lot more people getting smartphones still. Uh, older demographics. So basically people over the age of 45 are using Twitter a lot more and mass media integration. So pretty much every commercial, if you turn on TV, you can see follow us on Twitter. Uh, same with any kind of film, radio, and sports advertising. So using Twitter in business is really a form of relationship marketing. Um, and the purpose of relationship marketing is to solidify long-term relationships with an organization's best customers. So this promotes brand awareness, loyalty, more value to the brand. And this is all done through two-way communication. Um, so sports relationship marketing, there was a study that showed a direct correlation between relationship quality and behavioral outcomes. So basically, high quality relationships lead to purchase and consumption, uh, purchases of team apparel, tickets, and consumption on other levels, such as watching the games on TV, online, looking up highlights, things like that. So social media is really a perfect avenue for relationship marketing. And basically, it's done through planned service and unplanned messages. So planned messages would be just kind of general information. Uh, service messages would be things like how you can find the parking lots and where to go in the stadium. And unplanned messages would be more responding to any kind of user uh, with any kind of specific question, things like that. So social media and sports, traditional market is now limited. So there's a lack of two-way communication. It costs a lot more to conduct traditional marketing, and there's a lot more consumer resistance to advertising. So people obviously have DVRs and things like that where they don't have to watch advertising, making social media a lot more preferable for teams. So fans prefer it. Uh, there was a study that showed that fans prefer the internet, specifically social media, because of its convenience and the benefits that they can get out of it. So there's a lot more content. They feel like it's more geared towards them and they can talk to the team. Um, the teams prefer it because, again, it's got low entry costs compared to traditional marketing, and there's a larger fan base presence. So MLB teams specifically are using social media to broadcast things like personalized updates, so any kind of promotional contest, seat upgrades, scores, player transactions, and game highlights. They can also listen to their fans a lot more. So they can gather feedback from a larger portion of the fan base as opposed to, let's say, direct mail, phone calls, or even email. And this allows them to respond directly to the feedback or even implement some of the feedback into their promotions. Um, so the effectiveness of Twitter, there was a study from a lady named Amy Gershkoff in 2012, 
and she found that Twitter popularity leads to higher attendance in Major League Baseball games. So she said the key to this is engagement. So not just kind of giving general information, but asking more questions and giving fans the opportunities to vote in polls. She also found that poor performance for the team does not affect how many people go to the games. So by interacting with your fans more, they're more going for the entertainment value than just to see a team play well. So that's very important to note. Uh, next, I wanted to look at some of the specific uses around Major League Baseball and Twitter. So the Kansas City Royals and the Oakland Athletics show examples of how most teams use Twitter. And they use it mainly for game-related developments, so scores, highlights, trades, photos, videos, traffic, weather, you name it, they talk about it. Um, but they also have a lot of personalized engagement, and this is a little more specific for the Royals and the Athletics who don't have the largest fan base, but they are trying to grow it by talking to their fans a little bit more. So they provide direct responses to questions, things like what time do the gates open, uh, what time do the parking lots open, but they do provide polls for their fans as well. So fans can vote on their favorite promotions, uh, what kind of food items, you know, what kind of t-shirts do they want to see given away at the next game, things like that. So anytime you can involve the fans and let them voice their opinion a little bit, you're going to get a lot more response and, in turn, a lot more activity on Twitter. Uh, the Boston Red Sox do a lot of this, too. They even implement things like, what songs do fans want to hear? And more recently, they were recognized because they're taking a multi-language approach. So they have a Spanish and, just this year, introduced a Japanese Twitter account. So obviously they're going after more of a global audience. And it's important to note the Yankees are the only other team that have a Spanish language Twitter account, but they are leading the way for other MLB teams and many are expected to follow as soon as this year. And then of course, I want to rec recognize my guys, the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, they typically are known for not having the most people come to their games, but they're trying to address that through places like Twitter. So they have a lot of engagement, and they have kind of two approaches in that they provide a lot of the game-related developments, but they do a lot of engagement with their fans. And they pro provide a lot of behind-the-scenes information, things like pictures in the dugout, uh, pictures in the locker room, videos, and whatnot. But they also have a lot of humorous insights. So, again, they're recognized as having one of the more engaging approaches to Twitter, and I think that if you check out their social media accounts, especially Twitter, you can definitely see this. Um, so I wanted to also talk about teams that really aren't using it as well. And one of them is the Cleveland Indians. So basically they use their Twitter account to link to outside sources. So they run a blog called Tribe Vibe. It's a WordPress blog. And there is a lot more content on here. And they can obviously give a lot more information than 140 characters. But it leads to less interaction on Twitter. So... A lot of people aren't really into clicking on outside links. They just want to stay within Twitter. So this really is not the greatest approach, and they've kind of suffered because of that. Um, but I also want to talk about some of the other lowest-ranked teams. So Forbes did a study this year already that ranked all 30 teams based on their social media efforts and then compared it to their attendance. So it found that the Chicago White Sox, the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Arizona Diamondbacks, and the Miami Marlins are all suffering a little bit especially in attendance, but the Forbes study found that these teams also had minimal social media engagement. So especially things like asking questions and providing polls, they really don't do any of this. So really another correlation between teams not using Twitter appropriately and it leading to poor attendance in the stand. So ways to measure Twitter effectiveness um, are key performance indicators. So really teams need to focus on the long-term payoffs rather than short-term results. And this can be broken down into three categories of brand awareness, brand engagement, and word of mouth. So brand awareness, some of the key performance indicators are number of tweets about the brand. So these are mentions and hashtags. And this comes from the fans themselves, but also the teams themselves. Valence of tweets. So positive tweets about the team over the negative ones, and number of followers. Uh, brand engagement also takes number of followers into account, but it's also the number of replies. So this comes again from fans and teams. So are the fans replying to the questions and the polls that are very much encouraged with the relationship marketing approach? 
And are the teams responding to what the fans are saying as well? This all leads to more brand engagement. And finally, word of mouth. So the number of retweets, are the fans taking your content and wanting to share it with their other followers? So this leads to measuring the results of the key performance indicators. And teams really need to decide the value of their own key performance indicators. And that can be pretty difficult because there is a lack of bottom line conversions. You know, every once in a while, a team will probably post, hey, check out our new shirts or hats, something like that. But this is kind of a small fraction of basically what the overall intentions of Twitter are. So really, since these lack monetary value, the teams themselves need to decide what exactly are they trying to get out of these key performance indicators. And they can do this through social analytics, which we've talked about a lot before. Um, and so there's free options such as Google Analytics, but you know, they might want more out of their analytics, such as paid options, you know, Hootsuite, Adobe Social, but you really need to look into how this affects the return on investment. So this leads me to my research methods, and I looked at a lot of different studies, and there's been a lot that have been conducted about overall social media usage instead of just focusing on one channel, like Twitter. So I wanted to go ahead and do that. Um, but studies also exist currently for NFL, NBA teams, and overall sport venues, but none are specific to MLB. And then finally, I looked at a lot of articles that you know, describe the ways that MLB teams are using Twitter, but there wasn't a whole lot of quantitative data available, and there wasn't a whole lot of interviews with like the team marketing department. So again, I wanted to propose this research to be able to address all of these shortcomings of pre previous studies and concentrate specifically on Major League Baseball and Twitter. So I wanted to retrieve data directly from the MLB teams, and so I wanted to get quantitative data for team comparisons, so who's doing better than others, and then also get qualitative data so I can talk about it a little bit, say this is why teams are doing a little bit better. So I came up with some research questions to answer the overall question of how are MLB teams using Twitter to engage fans. These questions are what key objectives do MLB teams wish to accomplish via Twitter? What strategies are MLB teams implementing to accomplish the key objectives? How much staffing is dedicated to Twitter? How are MLB teams measuring their efforts on Twitter? And are MLB teams able to link increased profits to Twitter? So the sample that I wanted to use, again, was talking to all 30 MLB baseball teams, if possible. And I wanted to conduct in-depth interviews, um, hopefully with employees from the social media department. So not just the overall marketing department, but specifically the social media department and hopefully I could get a hold of the social media managers but if not I would definitely be interested in interviewing employees that work just on the Twitter portion of their marketing campaigns so obviously telephone and video chat would be preferred to be able to ask things like follow-up questions to get a little bit more information but email would be fine um, I think I could still gather plenty of data by using email so that pretty much wraps it up for me um, I wanted to apologize one more time for not being able to make the live lecture, but I also wanted to wish everyone a safe and happy summer, and thanks for a great semester.